On today's Locked On Giants podcast, should the Giants play Malik Neighbors in the preseason game against the Houston Texans? We've got that and more coming your way next on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus every single day. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, credentialed member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for New York Giants on SI. That's where you can find my written work, New York Giants on SI.com. And as always, big welcome on in to my Blue Crew community members, to my everydayers, to my newcomers to the program. Welcome. And of course, everybody in between, thank you so much for spending part of your day with us here on the Locked on Giants podcast. It is appreciated. And if you are watching on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you click the little bell to be notified every time I post a new video. And like the video, it all helps in the long run and it is appreciated. All right, on today's Locked on Giants podcast, there's a kind of a mini debate brewing about Malik Neighbors, Giants wide receiver Malik Neighbors, who's coming off of an ankle injury. And should he play in meaningless preseason games or should the Giants just put him in bubble wrap and put him on the shelf until week one against the Minnesota Vikings? So I'm going to take both sides of that and give you my thoughts on that topic. Then in segment two, Joe Shane was added again. Trader Joe was added again. And I want to talk a little bit about the trade made with the Dallas Cowboys uh, the Giants sending Jordan Phillips defensive lineman to Dallas and why that might be a sign of what's still to come. So I'll get into that in segment two. And then in segment three, I'm going to give you a little update on how some position groups are taking shape as far as the depth goes. And there's a lot to be encouraged by um, with, with some of the depth positions. I'm going to focus really on the defensive side uh, for you. So we'll give you an update on that as well. So again, Welcome on in, and thank you for being with me. Okay, let's talk about Malik Neighbors, all right? So for those who may not have been following, Malik Neighbors suffered an ankle injury back on Sunday. Um, it's unclear if he was stepped on. I think Dable said that he was rolled up on. So they held him out of practice on um, Monday. Um, Tuesday, uh, he was limited. Wednesday was a day off. And then today, Thursday, he was back out doing stuff. And Neighbors has not been ruled out of Saturday's preseason game against the Houston Texans. And that apparently has some giant fans up in arms about it because they're like, look, why put him out there? It's a meaningless preseason game. Why put him out there and risk getting injured? You know, put him in bubble wrap, put him on the bench until week one against the, um, the Minnesota Vikings. Folks, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Injuries are going to happen. It doesn't matter if it's preseason. It doesn't matter if it's regular season. It doesn't matter if it's postseason. Things happen. All right. Last year, the Giants took a very conservative approach with regards to their starters and key players. You might recall that the offensive line played one series, that Daniel Jones played one series. Uh, that coming in the second preseason game last year. And then we didn't hear from them the rest of the summer or yeah, the rest of the summer. So then what happened folks? Guess what? Week one, Andrew Thomas gets injured. You know, Daniel Jones gets injured. Saquon Barkley got injured. Injuries are going to happen. And the, the philosophy with injured players, in my opinion, at any rate, is if they are not going to make the injury any worse then let them go out there and play if they're able to play. Now, in the case of Malik Neighbors, look, this kid has been dynamite all summer long. He's just, you know, the speed, the separation, you know, the playmaking ability. It's just been so much fun to watch. 
But you know what, folks? I keep saying this as well. You cannot simulate the game speed in practice. No matter what you do, you just can't simulate it. And what you want from this Giants team, especially given the season they had last year, you need for them to hit the ground running. Okay. If they can't hit the ground running, then we're in for another long season, in my opinion. All right. So that being said, I do think if Malik Neighbors' ankle is, even if it's 80%, and there's no danger of that ankle getting made worse, put him out there. All right. Whether it's this week against Houston or next week against the Jets, let them get out there because look, Daniel Jones is going to be starting uh, against the Texans. And he has not gone up against a live pass rush since his injury way back in week nine of last season. So there's a matter of timing. There's a matter of, you know, feel. And again, you can't simulate that in practice, no matter how hard you try, because the quarterbacks in the red jersey and the defense is instructed, don't touch the quarterback. So a lot of times you see plays that look like great completions, but they're actually not completions because the defense actually would have had a sack if they had been allowed to tackle. So I just think it's important to get Malik Neighbors out there, get him some snaps. I'm not saying play him the whole game, play him a quarter if you want, play him, you know, a couple of series, but just get him out there. And again, as long as that injury is in no danger of being made worse, what's the harm? If anything, this could be, you know, beneficial for him. So that's kind of where I stand on whether or not Malik Neighbors should play on, on Saturday. Now, you know, some of you are going to say, well, what happens if he gets hurt? Because, you know, guys do get hurt in preseason. Again, folks, you don't want to see anybody get hurt, but it's the risk that's involved. You know, these guys know what the risk is. And, you know, you could say, well, you know, why play him in week one against the Vikings? Because that's a game the Giants should win. So maybe they should hold Malik Neighbors, you know, for a tougher game. Maybe that, that starting in week three when the Giants have that stretch, that tough stretch of games. Nah, that's that's just not how it works. I don't see that, you know, how it's going to play out that way. And, you know, look, neighbors will probably be the first to tell you that he wants to be out there. He wants to get snaps. He wants to compete. You know, isn't that better than having a guy say, eh, you know what? I just want to sit on the bench. I just want to collect the paycheck. I just want to, you know, chill and watch. The Giants have had guys like that over the years. Won't tell you who, but there was there was a famous first round draft pick that they had. And I'll never forget that this what I was at a, a, a scrimmage up in Albany. These were back in the days of the Albany camp when Tom Coughlin was was the head coach. And this first round draft pick used every excuse in the book not to play and not to practice. And he didn't last very long, folks. So, you know. The fact that Neighbors wants to be out there, that he wants to compete, that he wants to grow with his teammates, I applaud the kid. And again, if that injury is in no danger of being made worse, let him go. Let him cook. You know, that's how I feel about it. So we'll see how, you know, how much he plays, if he plays at all. I do think he's going to play on Saturday. Tyrone Tracy, the running back, I don't think he's going to play because that's still, you know, kind of a fresh injury. But Neighbors is the important one because you want to get the timing and everything synced up with a quarterback in a live game situation when the snaps and, and, and the whole pace of the game is a lot quicker than what it is in practice. All right, coming up next, Trader Joe was at it again. Joe Shade making a rare division trade with the Dallas Cowboys. I want to talk about that and what that could potentially mean moving forward right after this. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever find yourself comparing your life to those you see on social media? Comparison is the thief of joy, and it's so easy to envy other people's lives. It might look like they have it all together on social media, but in reality, they probably don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so that you can start living your best life. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online 
designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you find your assigned therapist isn't a match, you can switch at any time for no additional charge. So go on and stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. Hey, Giant fans, thanks so much for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen today. For your second listen, why not go and enjoy the Locked on Fantasy Football podcast? Get daily insight into the best fantasy draft strategy so that you can win your league this season. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. And uh, the Giants had a carded practice on Thursday. So really not a whole lot in terms of, you know, observations or anything like that. You know, carded practice is usually what they hold before a game just to kind of get themselves familiarized with, you know, the opponent and what they can expect and stuff like that. So instead, I'm kind of focusing on some bigger picture items uh, in this podcast. And I want to talk about the trade made by Joe Shane. Um, that the news came in late last night, late um, Wednesday night. And for those who missed it, the Giants sent defensive lineman Jordan Phillips to the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, actually, it was Phillips and a seventh round pick to the Dallas Cowboys in exchange for a sixth round draft pick in 2026. Now, the NFL Network has since come out and clarified that it's a conditional, it's all a conditional trade meaning that in order for the trade to to you know change hands and the the as far as the draft picks go Phillips has to make the Cowboys roster and be on it for two games. So here's why you know this trade in particular although it, it's not a blockbuster by any stretch of the imagination this is kind of interesting because um the Giants have had an abundance of players at different positions. And, you know, I know sometimes I'll say, hey, you know, maybe they should consider trading this guy. And some of you will come back and say, oh, God, what could they possibly get for that guy? You know, or teams know that they're going to cut cut a guy. And, you know, why would any team give up a draft pick? Folks, listen, I think it was pretty clear. It was trending towards uh, Phillips not making the roster, given how the depth behind him on the defensive line was was shaping up. The simple fact that Joe Shane was able to swing a trade, even though it's with Dallas, a division rival, I get it. You don't see the uh, division trades made very often, but the fact that Shane was able to swing a trade and get a sixth round draft pick in 2026, kudos to him. All right. Now, hopefully the trade, like I said, will go through because it is a conditional pick, uh, a conditional situation, but to give up a seventh round pick in, in 20 you know, 2026 and then get, have two uh, six round picks in case you want to trade up. I like what Shane's doing. And I'll tell you what, I hope there are more trades involved because the giants, if you look at their roster, their training camp roster, they have an abundance of receivers. All right. Now you can't tell me that there aren't going to be teams out there that are going to need receivers and sure they can sit there and they can wait for the waiver wire to, you know, for their turn on the waiver wire. But remember, the waiver wire order is the same as the draft order from last spring, from this past spring. So, for example, the Giants pick sixth, and um, I think Carolina goes first, I think, that you know, given the trade. So it's the same as the draft order. It's basically what it is. And that's how it's going to be for the first three weeks of the season. So if you have a team that is lower on the waiver wire order and that team needs, say, a receiver, and the Giants say to themselves, okay, we've pretty much decided who we're not going to carry, so maybe we'll make this guy available or that guy available. And if we can get an extra, I don't know, sixth round or seventh round pick, why not? Those those, uh, day three draft picks, can be used as bargaining chips if you want to move up. So 
I would not be stunned if another trade comes down. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow or next week or anything like that, but when we get to the 53-man roster cut down, you could still see some trades being made. You know, I don't think it's going to be a, you know, an abundance of trades, but I would not be shocked if one of the receivers gets moved because again, you've got the waiver wire order. And if, if a team really wants a guy and that team is, you know, low on the wa waiver wire, they ain't waiting. All right. They're going to, they're going to say, okay, look for a low draft pick, we'll make the move and, and, and be done with it. And that's kind of what you saw with the Cowboys. The Cowboys needed help on their defensive line. All right. The Giants just so happened to have an extra guy. Hey, Jerry Jones, you want Jordan Phillips? Sure. We're not keeping him. You know, you want him? Give us a draft pick. So in, in maybe past years, you know, you might say, well, you know, they were going to cut the guy anyhow. He's 30 years old or whatever. Um, what could he possibly bring? Well, now you see the benefit of trading these guys that maybe, you know, aren't going to make the roster and who you wouldn't think are going to get you anything, but they actually end up getting you something. So I applaud Joe Shane for that move. I think that was very smart. Matter of fact, I think you can honestly say with Joe Shane that um, most of the trades he has made since becoming Gi Giants general manager, they've been pretty spot on. I think the one trade you can maybe argue didn't work out, obviously, was the Darren Waller trade. But on paper, that trade looked good, you know, because the Giants really didn't have a number one receiver and Waller was this big physical target. And that was the idea to get Daniel Jones a big physical target to throw to. And then, of course, injuries happen. But you could argue also that, you know, Waller had the injury history and injured players are going to get injured. And, you know, the Giants, you know, gave up a third round pick for this guy and, and you know, it just didn't work out. So you can argue that that trade maybe wasn't a smart one in, in the long run, but every other trade thus far that, that he's made, you know, um, the Brian Birch trade, is anybody going to argue with that one? Um, I know I'm not. <laughs> I think that was a smart trade. Uh, and there have been other trades, you know, basically draft day trades um, that have been made. Like, for example, when they traded up to get uh, Jalen Hyatt, for example, um, that was a smart trade. Um, some other trades that Shane has made, uh, going back to 2022, um, they used, um, I think it was pick or actually here's the list here. I'm looking on my, my phone. I've got the list here. They had pick 38 for pick 43 managed to get Wandale Robinson and Dane Belton. Um, they sent Kadarius Tony to the chiefs. You remember that one, uh, that one, they got, uh, picks, 100 and 209, 209 became Trey Hawkins. Pick 100 went towards the Waller trade. Um, I know in 2022, pick 36 for pick 38, uh, which was used in the next trade. So they got Mac, uh, Michael McFadden. And let's see, there were some other ones. 2025, they sent the six round pick for Boogie Basham, who looks like he's going to have um, a role on this year's defense. The Leonard Williams trade. Uh, the Isaiah Simmons trade last year, seventh round pick for a guy who's going to have a big role in the defense. So really, you know, early on, you can say that Joe Shane's trading history has been pretty good thus far. I mean, it hasn't been perfect. Nothing's perfect, but it's been pretty good. And I'm almost positive there's going to be another trade. I'd be surprised if there's not going to be a trade of one of those receivers because the Giants are just loaded at, at, at that spot. Teams know it. And some team at the bottom of the waiver wire is probably going to want one of those receivers. All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at the defensive side of the ball and how some of the positions are shaping up depth-wise. There's a lot of good in this one. And then there are still some question marks. So we'll go over that right after this. Hey, Giant fans, there's always plenty of sporting action going on all year round, and with it, loads of potential betting opportunities on point spreads, money lines, futures, and so much more. With FanDuel, America's number one sports book, placing your bets is so easy. Just pick your sport, then choose your events, and then the type of bets that you want to place, and just sit back and wait and see if you're a winner. FanDuel has a super easy and secure app that lets you do it all. Plus, they offer fast payouts on your winnings. 
And for the rest of this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster bonus every day. So go on and head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. And in this segment, I want to look at the defensive side of the ball because there were some question marks coming into training camp about the depth chart at certain positions on the defensive side of the ball. And I think at this point, you can say that a lot of those questions have probably been answered. All right. So I want to start with the defensive line. And in the previous segment, I spoke about the trade of Jordan Phillips. This was a guy who, when the Giants first signed him, I thought, okay, by default, he's probably going to be the starter. But Joaquin Nunes Rochez has really stepped up and, and done well in this in this defensive scheme. And by the way, I put, posted an article on New York Giants on SI about Raheem Nunes Rochez and how he's taken to this defense, if you want to check that out. So Nunes Rochez, his um, stepping up has kind of made, you know, has made Jordan Phillips expendable, hence he was traded. Now behind him, you have a lot of young depth, but you know what? Andre Patterson, I can't say enough good things about that man as a defensive line coach. He and Brian Cox have done wonders with that defensive line. I mean, just simply amazing. So the depth, as I see it, I think it's going to be, uh, obviously, Dexter Lawrence. You're going to have Nacho, Nunes Rojas. Then you're going to have behind them Jordan Riley, Ryder Anderson. And it looks like Elijah Chapman is going to make the roster. I mean, Chapman's not a very big guy, but, man, he plays big plays powerful. So it looks like that young man, thanks to the trade of of, uh, Jordan Phillips, Chapman is going to make the roster. So that means that guys like, you know, DJ Davidson, probably going to go to the practice squad, you know, um, uh, Jake Rogers, another one who could go to the practice squad. There's just not enough room for these guys, but that doesn't mean that they're not worth developing further. So that's how I see the defensive line depth shaping up. Another position where I guess I was a little, you know, curious to see how that would shape up is inside linebacker. So you knew that Bobby O'Karake was a lock. Micah McFadden is a lock, obviously. Um, Matthew Adams, that's a guy that I had making the roster all along for his special teams ability. Plus he can give you something on the defense. So I think he makes it. Uh, I think now Darius Mwaso is going to make it. At first, I wasn't sure quite what his role was going to be, but I could see him making it over, say, um, you know, uh, Darian Beavers, who I think is on on the bubble here. Carter Coughlin, I think, should make it, and only because Deontay Johnson's got that ankle injury, which is week to week. So I think that kind of, you know, helped reset the bottom of that depth chart a little bit. And, you know, speaking of the ankle injury, it's going to be interesting to see what the Giants do if they use any of the new IR rule designations where they can pull two guys at, 50, at during the 53-man cutdown and say, okay, we're going to designate these guys for return. So I'm curious to see if they do use that uh, that allowance that they have on any guys. It's still too early because, you know, you don't know what injuries are going to pop up between now and the time they have to make these decisions, but – Something certainly to keep an eye on. All right, at safety, the Giants signed a couple of safeties. They finally, you know, gave up on Jalen Mills, who just, you know, was on the NFI non-football injury list. You know, no surprise there that, you know, that was supposed to be a veteran signing, but, you know, they're not they're not going to roll with that. You know, I meant, I forgot to mention Isaiah Simmons with the inside linebackers. He's going to make it. But Isaiah Simmons can also be considered like a, a pseudo defensive back. So, you know, you've got him in the mix. You've got, you know, uh, Dane Belton's going to make it. You've got Tyler Newbin's going to make it. Jason Pinnock's going to make it. So you're pretty much set there at safety, I think. Um, the question now becomes is who becomes the starter? Is it going to be Newbin or is it going to be Belton? Right now, Newbin has made up tremendous ground on Belton. That still needs to be determined um, how that's going to play out. And we'll obviously be keeping an eye on that as the preseason marches on cornerback. That's where there's probably the biggest question mark at this point. Um, you know, Deontay Banks is a given Nick McLeod's a given. 
Um, Cordell Flott is going to be make the team. Drew Phillips is going to make the team. I think Darnay Holmes makes it. You know, but how do they stack it up? You know, it looks like right now uh, Nick McLeod might end up being the CB2 on this team. Not a bad choice, but how is that defensive backfield, Those in, in particular those cornerbacks, how are they going to hold up? So that's what I'm curious to see um, as, as we go on because, it, like I said, the Giants have some really, really tough competition in receivers on their schedule. And then uh, outside linebacker. Pretty cut and dried, I think, there. Your starters are going to be Thibodeau and Burns. I think, you know, there's going to be a role for Aziz Ojolari today. Uh, defensive coordinator Shane Bowen mentioned that they've been playing um, Ojolari inside on the on the defensive line, sort of like a Justin Tuck role. I don't know if you remember that, but Justin Tuck used to move inside on pass rushing downs, and a lot of his sacks came from the DT role as opposed to lining up against the tackle. So uh, that kind of helped him. Um, I think Tamon Fox is probably on the bubble. Uh, Boogie Basham is obviously going to have a role, I think, on this team, um, you know, since he can play defensive line and he can also play standing up. So the defense starting to take shape and starting to crystallize. Really, again, the only question mark in my mind is cornerback. And if they don't maybe look to add to that group. So we'll have to see about that. Now you're probably wondering about, um, you know, the offense. I'm going to save the offense, I think, for that for another show. But you know, that's my take on the defense. I think overall that defense is coming together, and I'm doing some research. I want to pull some stats on the defense versus what they did last year versus what they're doing, um, you know, or how it's trending this year. So I'll try and have that for you in an upcoming show. All right. Speaking of which, before I say goodbye. On tomorrow's program, we're going to do a what to watch uh, program on the upcoming preseason game. There's a lot to talk about then, so I hope you will join me for that. Otherwise, folks, that's it for today. Thank you, as always, for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow.